Hey everyone, I'm working on an iPhone 6 Plus that was sent here for data recovery. The description I've got sounds a lot like what I run into a Touch IC failure where somebody will register for a Touch IC repair and then like two and a half months later they're saying, hey, uh, is that job ID still good? Can I still send it in? Well, that's because you can continue to make these things work by bending them and then by the time they get here they typically have half backlight and um, all kinds of other problems too due to being bent to make the touch screen work so that's what this seemed like at first but now I'm not really sure what I'm getting into this looks like a pretty traditional VCC main short there is a, a tiny bit of liquid I'm gonna say in the bottom of the housing here you can see on the ear speaker uh, but I can't see any traces making it onto the board I really don't know what this is I think maybe a factory worker just had some poop on their hands from maybe they had a hole in a uh, hole in their toilet paper or something and uh, they came back to work with poop on their hands and then they got it on this ear speaker assembling this phone I don't think that's related uh, what I'm running into here is a pretty firm um, well I can't say firm well let's see what I'm running into here is a VCC main short and I'm gonna show you in resistance mode what we're getting across VCC main I'm gonna switch you over to the microscope so that you can see what I'm seeing and we're just going to go ahead and check VCC main to ground. And what do we get? We get uh, pretty much zero ohms. My meter, if I touch ground and ground, that's probably going to be about the same, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So we get um, a zero ohm short to ground. And I'm not getting much in the way of heat initially. So I thought, well, maybe this, maybe this will be a good video. So I'm going to show you what I do on a lot of these especially whenever they're data recovery this one is data recovery we are going to have a look at um, the bottom of the board here I've already got the shield pulled off gosh I'm so out of shape I haven't I haven't been recording because work has been nuts uh, we're gonna have a look at this little guy here because I want to get it out of the way it makes for a nice easy way for me to make a connection to VCC main from my power supply. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab this thing and I'm going to pull this directly off the board. Good God, he's heating a board that came in for data. Yeah, I've done this little procedure here dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times and I've never ever ever killed a phone, not once. So barely enough heat there. You can tell by the flat spots on top of the solder that I did not even fully melt the balls. You see how flat they are on top? And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and make me a jumper. Anywhere here. Let's, see. Let's get a little more solder in there. I am so out of video practice. That's okay. We'll get there, right? Hey, that'll work. That's 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 good right there. So then we're going to take us some flux and put it there. And then I'm going to heat it up. And I'm going to hold a pair of tweezers here in my right hand um, just because I'm codependent and I can't float solder without a pair of tweezers in my hand. There we go. So we got a nice big ball there, nice and shiny. And what we've done there, I'll switch you over to the schematics, and let's search up on this board. We're going to search for Tigris, and we'll skip down a couple of pages here until we find it. Here we go, Q1403. That's the component that I just removed and jumpered. And you'll see Q1403, you've got uh, VBAT on this side, PPBAT VCC, and this little dude here, I'm going to say creates VCC main. I know... It could be this, but I'm telling you right now, if you draw too much current on VCC main, it comes through this little dude here, which comes from the battery line. Um, so uh, what I did here was removed this transistor, and I've made a connection from all of these lines directly across here, and now VCC main and VBAT are now on the same line. And if we switch over to ZXW tool, uh, we still on a, let's see, we on an iPhone 6 Plus. Let's get an iPhone 6 Plus open. Probably a little overkill just to find a short, but um, I like being able to just to plug my power supply on. It's 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 really handy. Uh, the wires are a little small, so 
you got to watch that. All right, so let's get down here. <clears throat> here we're going to look at Q1403. And what I've done, you see this side here, this is the battery line. And then this side here is VCC main. So you can literally jumper any of these together except our, our except this one. So that's what we've done here. And by doing that, I can now safely hook my supply um, directly up to the battery rail on this thing without smoking Q1403. So what we're going to do here, I think this board has just about cooled down. Very close, yeah? Now, I have been using free spray on some of these. Some of these shorts are just so firm that they just they don't make any heat. Um, so, let's see. In order for you to see this best, I think you're going to be better off like this. That way you can see the board. You can see me plugging it in. And you can see the reading on the supply. And how are we going to do this? so that I can show you. It's all its all different when I'm recording now. It's its completely different. Well, not completely different, but different enough to throw me off, off guard here. So we're at four point. I've learned with this cheap supply to replace it very soon, but I've also learned to get at a spot on the fine-tuned potentiometer that's not scratchy. So if it's if it's a little bit wonky, I just go this way a little bit and then bring the course up to match it and then I got a clean spot. It, 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 it's really, it's, it's ridiculous. So we're going to hook our power supply up here and we should get an instant load. We got 5 amps at 4 volts. That is 20 watts. Okay, and I feel that I have heat building. Oh, well, my wires are getting hot for one. Okay, we have heat building near the top, but I can't tell which side it's on. So let's pull our ground lead out of the supply, hook this back up, flip it over. Now once again, you, you cannot do this on the battery line without bypassing Q1403. It's just, you, you can't do it. Q1403, Q1403 will catch on fire and put off smoke signals. Come on, I just bragged about finding a clean spot. All right, five amps, and we're checking the back side of the board now. Another really, really tough short. I know, somebody's gonna tell me to buy a special camera. Man, that's a tough short. It seems to be heating the whole board up. It's, it's hard to tell where it's coming from. I, I cannot feel where it's coming from. So it, it's, you know, there's like 20 watts there. So it's, it's definitely building up some heat faster than it can dissipate it. But it's doing it such a way that I can't tell where it's coming from. So now that we've baked this thing for a while, let's see if we can find anything changing colors. I don't see anybody changing colors yet, right? Everything looks healthy. Oh, I don't like the crack running across that under. <laughs> Crap. I'm so terribly sorry. I cannot focus this microscope for shit. Uh, I don't like the crack running across this underfill here. You know, that's obvious signs of flexing, but um, that's not a short. So let's let's move on. Watch it be under this shield that I don't pull just because it's hard. Now, if I see like a reason to pull it, I will. But the heat here is coming from top side. And I just, man, I can't tell where it's coming from. I, I cannot tell where it's coming from. So if I switch you back over to my hands and I put this board here, you're able to see the board. And I am going to go ahead and I'm going to arm our iPhone 6 Plus plug here. 
and get it disconnected from the supply. Now I'm going to hook it up to the board. And I'm going to pull out my free spray, which I do use not very often, but whenever I run into a solid, solid short or a really, really, really teeny tiny short, um, like either extreme is really hard to find. Uh, so this will save me a lot of time. And it's almost. Do not make me look like a fool. We're going to let that frost over nice and pretty. There we go. And then I'm going to connect power. Boom. Did you see that? There's one little hole opened up there. I'm going to do that once more under the microscope. Now, keep in mind, this is a short that I would not. I mean, I, I may have eventually found it. But this is a really, really, really tough short because it's, it's shorted really well. And... That can's about empty. Here, I'm bragging about rarely ever using it, and I got an empty can. Yeah, explain that one, buddy. <laughs> okay, so let's hook our power back up. And I'm going to get the microscope. There we go. We're freezing over. Nice and frosty. All right, we're going to hook up power. Ready? Hey, look who's melting down in there. We have a cap down here, Melton. This cap way down here in the butt crack between the CPU and these two inductors is our heat source. Okay? So, what I'm going to do now, let's see, let me make sure I don't lose track of that because I'm an absolute scatterbrain. Let's mark that little dude. Let's just. Scratch it up so that I can see it under the microscope. Okay, so we got some nice scratches in it. I'm going to take compressed air and I'm going to blow the uh, condensation off of this board. Now, this is condensation, guys. Condensation is pure, pure, pure distilled water. It This condensated directly out of the air uh, because I don't think there's any water in that can, right? Ingredients. I think it's like compressed CO2 or something. It's There's no water there. Tetraph fluoroethane should I don't know maybe there is water in tetrafluoroethane I, I don't know but I'm pretty sure this is condensation so um, distilled water is not a good conductor in fact I don't think it's a conductor at all it takes dissolved solids in order to make it conductive so well, maybe very very little I, I don't know don't quote me on that so we're gonna blow that off of there and we're gonna let this board come up to room temp by itself not too fast and while it does that we're gonna have a look at ZXW tool and see what we get. So on ZXW tool, let's get our board back under the microscope. We decided it was this one right in the middle of those two. Okay, with the scratch on it. And if we look at ZXW tool on the top side and we zoom in here, that is a VCC main cap. And it is also right there with that crater going through the underfill. So I, I wonder if that is is somehow related um, that's actually going to be a really really tricky cap to deal with because it's stuck way 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 down in there uh, so also while this board warms up I'm gonna get down in there and do a little bit of a oh, I need to change blades do a little manual labor here this is a really risky repair because the CPU is right there and you don't want to crack it okay So I just broke my blade off a little more. Okay. Should use a stronger tool for this anyway. You know, I could heat it up. I could heat this underfill up and, and melt that off of there. Um, but this is right next to the CPU. And although I am very, very ballsy when it comes to heat, 
Um, there's only one shot at getting the data off of this phone, and this is down, like, way down in the underfill here, and I just really feel happy about digging this thing off the fucking board. I mean, that just... There's something really satisfying about yanking these things off the board like abscessed tooth, like a, like a, like a bad tooth. Okay, so let's switch you back over to... Uh, let me turn the meter back on here. Just a mild pain in the neck, turning that meter back on. I'm going to have to get a bench model that does not do that. Okay, let's flip over here and check VCC main to ground in resistance mode. In resistance mode, I get... 500,000 big ones, which means there's no longer a short to ground. And my next step from here, let's switch you back over to me, since I know you're all here just to see me. Let's set that thing aside, and I'm going to grab an iPhone 6 Plus. You know, let's use mine. Uh, I'm going to grab an iPhone 6 Plus test housing, which is here. I'm going to use this screen. I'm going to make sure that I know dang sure, because I, I started to think, okay, I should go ahead and just use their housing, right? This is clear VCC main short, but the way that speaker looks on that one, I just, I, I don't like taking. If I don't have to take a big chance, I try not to. I've learned what chances I can completely take safely, um, and that's probably one of them, but, you know, that battery's dead, this battery's not, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, these tougher shorts, I, I cave. I use free spray. It's just, it saves me so much time. And there we go. Apple logo, half backlight. Imagine that. An iPhone 6 Plus with half backlight and most likely touch IC failure. But I guarantee you I'm going to get this thing to work good enough to recover the data. Um, some of you might say, oh, what, it's just data recovery, so you just don't put the cap back on. You just, what, you, it just it's all trash just because of data recovery? Well, I'm here to tell you, this is an iPhone 6 Plus, okay? It's going to have touch IC failure because it has half backlight. They're all just, you know, it's, it's a 6 Plus. But then you add all of that to the fact that I pulled a monumental size screw out of this bottom left hole when disassembling this phone. Like, I can actually see where it cut through and out the other side of the first layer. I don't know, the, the camera there is not, not really doing it justice, but um, all in all, it's just, th this is not a good candidate for repair. There's a lot of stuff that I can fix, but there's a lot of times whenever I know that a repair is not going to be robust or there's just, <sighs> this is data recovery. All right, moving on. There we go, we're up to a point where we can enter a passcode, and we have working touch. I am going to grab the right canister for this one passcode this is a really awesome customer the passcode is always here right right yeah okay <laughs> all right and I'm gonna turn off the hand cam there because I don't want to show you what's on their wallpaper and my next step here is to connect it to iTunes. Come on, you want to trust it? Of course I want to trust it. They need their data. This has been a data recovery day. I've done nothing but data recovery. I started at 6 a.m. It's 1 p.m. and I've just I've really been kicking ass today. All right, we've said trust. We've said continue. This one requests exclusively to encrypt the backup. Okay, we're ready with what I'm going to set the passcode to be.
Okay, and this one is backing up. Um, notice the other half of the backlight. I'm not going to show you that right now, but the other half of the backlight light just miraculously started working. This phone is actually working as it should. Anyways, guys, that is going to be the that's going to be it for this video. Uh, this was a really straightforward, successful data recovery, and um, totally awesome. I've worked on a bunch of them today, and I have not had one single unsuccessful data recovery. I'm not going to brag a whole lot. This is only number three, uh, but man, some of these are really, really, really time consuming. So um, that 5S that I did, that I showed in just this last video, I worked on that one for a few hours before I just up and decided to change the PMIC. So um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you have successful repairs, and I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.